Mohammed, um, you're going to give us some views on some specificities on how you think this agenda might be advanced in, in specific terms, and I'd, I'd love to hear your views. Sure, thank you very much, Paul. Um, it's a pleasure to be here at this very illustrious conference in the company of such an august panel and speaking to such an inspiring audience on a topic of great significance. A big thank you to the organizers for including it in the conference. As we have heard um, previously, and Lean has persuasively outlined how and why capitalism is broken, I've been tasked to set out um, possibly some fixes before it's too late. Let me start by recalling um, a personal anecdote, um, a parchment dated 1874, which my great-grandfather left his son, and which was given to me by my father as the North Star to guide me when I was active in the for-profit world. Son, my father told me, remember the eight S's while doing business. These are the duties and responsibilities that you owe. S stands for supreme creator, S for supplier, S for servant, S for served, S for state, S for surroundings, and S for society. Be responsible and give all these S's their due and you will never go wrong. Today, the narrative is more sophisticated, but the principles are the same. In order to understand how to fix capitalism, we need to understand how the corporation has undergone a fundamental transformation from being a company which, which predominantly had tangible assets to the mindful corporation with intangible assets and soon, in my view, to be taken over by the robot corporation. Surveillance capitalism and valuations that are based on brands and brains are now in the vogue. While the mindful corporation has made immense contribution to economic prosperity and development, levels of income and social inequality, as we have heard, have widened alongside the loss of privacy, respect, and dignity. Let's look at an analogy. Lynn talked about the US. Consider the American economy as a large apartment block. Until 30 years ago, it was the object of envy. But in the last generation, its character has changed. The penthouses at the top keep getting larger and larger, the apartments in the middle are feeling more and more squeezed, and the basement has flooded. To round it off, the elevator is no longer working, which means that the very rich do not become poor, and the very poor can never become rich. For a lot of middle class, we talked about the American dream. The American dream is really now a dream because you have to be asleep to believe in it. So, are we doomed? It is just as illogical to suggest abolishing capitalism because it hasn't abolished poverty as it would be to suggest abolishing places of worship because they have not abolished sin. The challenge is not to abolish capitalism, but to humanize it, whereby true free enterprise is balanced by a sustainable environment providing equal opportunity and benefiting all stakeholders. Under this humanized capitalism, corporate and political leadership must depend more, as we have heard, on moral authority than on self-serving manipulative schemes. This requires leadership, both business and political, to be bold and decisive in fundamentally transforming the political and financial economies and rendering them reflective of the population demographics. The fix, if I can suggest, i.e. the humanized capitalism, involves constructive collaboration by embracing the few things. Firstly, focusing on meritocracy, treating, as we have heard, women fairly in terms of equitable employment, no sexual harassment, respecting privacy, respect and dignity. Secondly, planning and acting generationally, 
by resisting the temptation to consume seed capital, but investing it for the future generation. Thirdly, nourishing the entrepreneurial spirit by funding and promoting business ventures ethically and with transparency and free from the politics of patronage and political largesse. We have to create new assets that create new jobs rather than exchanging existing assets at ever rising high valuations, private equity style. We have to bring impact on people, planet and purpose to the heart of decision making so that at all times the focus is on four Ps in this order, people, planet, profits, sorry, people, planet, purpose, and finally profits. We have to insist on a stable and predictable regulatory framework which permits business to design and implement responsible and sustainable business models. We have to ensure, as Lynn said, that the multiple of executive pay to employee pay returns to the more decent and fairer levels of the 1980s and 90s. Pay has to be based on what you know and how you do things as opposed to who you know. And it should be structured on systems that are based on societal and environmental stewardship. We have to negate looking at short-term aspects in business and government. We have to have a long-term view on business. We have to stop CEOs from sending jobs offshore, from concentrating on decisions that move the company's share price, such as share buybacks, and from investing in technologies that benefit ever so few people. And in my view, the next two points are very, very important. We have to balance the corporation's production and usage and abusage of different types of capital and assets and we have to produce balance sheets that account for the human, intellectual, natural, social, and as well as material and financial capital, and we have to report net worth that is in relation to all these forms of capital and not only financial capital. We have to work jointly with accounting and investing ecosystems to ensure that companies are valued not only by taking into account the the cost of financial capital, which is how it is today, but all other forms of capital. In my view, the GAAP and the IFRS are way out of date and need to be reformed. We have to ensure that taxes are not avoided or evaded. We have to ensure that there is zero tolerance for corruption. And in the interim, while all this is being implemented, it would be wonderful if a wealth tax could be introduced in place of the voluntary CSR that we have today. Finally, it is important to get all this right now so that when the robot corporation comes into being, we have identified the right AI and algorithms to infuse into this system. Time does not permit me to talk about my 10 corporate commandments for business, but I have spoken on this, it's on YouTube, and I would suggest it when you have time, you look at that. Thank you very much.